Hello there guys and welcome back to 100% Chelsea for my review of the Wolverhampton Wanderers um, FA Cup round game against Chelsea away at Wolves and um, you know it finished 2-0 to us thankfully because it was a very difficult game um, and I said it could be difficult but I expected a lot bigger scoreline especially after I saw what team we put out um, so obviously the lineup is up now. We started off with not the exact lineup that I predicted but I predicted a rather strong lineup and that's what it was. Main changes happen at the back, if we're being honest. So it was Pegovic in goal. Um, the three centre-backs being Nathan Aki, John Terry and Kurt Zuma. So pretty much all our three um, starting centre-backs were rested, which, you know, is good because why not? <laughs> um, two wing-backs being on the left, Pedro on the right, Moses stayed in the team. Two centre-mids being Cesc Fabregas and Nathan Chalaba. And up front, it was actually Hazard, Costa um, and William. So, um, you know... Our four best, five best attacking players in Hazard, William, Pedro, Costa, Fabrega started the game, and even Moses, who can be really good going forward. So I was like, fuck's sake, under normal circumstances, we should absolutely smash them off the park. But that's not at all what happened. Um, quick little fact <laughs> on a side note was apparently Wolves' record attendance since 1989. I mean, our song, You're Only Here for the Chelsea. Really did come true today, didn't it? <laughs> if that's true, you know, that's what the commentator said um, during the game anyway. But yeah, starting off with the first half, and we did, we just didn't play well for the whole of the first half. First of all, Seville, former um, Chelsea player, Chelsea youth, youth team player, hit the post, really should have scored. We got really, really lucky there. Suma completely messed it up. He just flew past the ball, um, if I can remember correctly. And then, yeah, Seville was pretty much on his own in the box and just smashed it against the post. Really lucky on that one. And then the only chance, I think the only chance we had all first half long was William. Incredible um, long pass by Fabregas. Took it down well, William. And I don't know, he just, he took it, he controlled it well, but he just let it bounce a little bit too high. And then he had to touch it with his head again. And then he tried to like lob the keeper and the keeper just got a touch to it. Should have done better, but it was difficult to score. But that was literally, I think, the only chance we had all first half long. Which is terrible. Like, we were under a lot of pressure. We just couldn't get a pass in together. The only, like, situation from what we seemed a little bit dangerous was Sesk's long-range passing. Other than that, nothing happened. Absolutely nothing. Um, another problem was they did really well in defending against Diego Costa. They crowded him. So whenever he tried to take down one of those long balls by Fabregas and lay it off to either Hazard or William or whoever was, you know, running onto him, they were crowding him so much that he couldn't even chest it down or, like, control it. No chance. Yes, he, oh, his first touch wasn't always great, and sometimes he took it a little bit too long, like he's done for the last couple of weeks. But most of the time, it was just him being surrounded by three, four players. So, um, you know, it's difficult to deal with that. But yeah, first half, not much happened. It was just a dire game. Um, you know, fair play to Wolves, because they gave us a proper game. They didn't have many chances, but they troubled us a lot. Like, they put in a lot of crosses, and um, you could just see that that back three just isn't used to playing with each other. You know, Zuma, he still needs a lot of time before we can even think about putting him into the starting eleven. Not before next um not before next season, after preseason. Before that we can't even think about that. Um Aki done alright. Obviously with John Terry we always have to we can't play a high line with John Terry in the team because he's too slow. Um so that always hinders us a little bit. Like defending, you know, heading the ball away, tackling, intercepting, he's he's really good and you can't really see his lack of pace. Because we sit back a little, you know, the back line is stood a little bit further from you know, from the get-go with him and the team. Um, but yeah, they put us under a lot of pressure. Fair play to them. Second half didn't start off very different, if I'm honest, for the first 10 minutes. It took us, yeah, like I said, 10 minutes until we got a grip of the game. And then it started to, you know, look like what I expected it would look like. You know, we pinned them into their half. They couldn't even get it out to hit us on the counter. It was starting to look a lot better. We couldn't... Met managed to create many proper chances until we actually scored but it was a lot better um and you know we, we desperately needed that and finally in the 65th minute Pedro made it 1-0 after good play to be fair long ball by Fabregas to Costa to run after you know turned around next to the defender laid it back to um, Hazard who put it out wide to William who saw Pedro pretty much completely free at the, you know just inside the box on the left hand side um, put in a good cross to him. Pedro headed it down bottom corner. Nothing keeper would have done it, could have done about it. Great finish and um, a vital goal for us because after that, it was a cruise. It was a little bit of a cruise. I'm not going to lie. Everything you know was a lot easier. They 
took a little while to like get back on their feet because you know they've knocked out Stoke, they've knocked out Liverpool, and um, now they're trailing. Obviously, they wanted to continue their FA Cup run, but you know, <laughs> thankfully for us, that didn't happen. Um, 73rd minute, Aspilicueta came on for Pedro, um, which meant Ake moved up to the left wing back position, and Aspilicueta played actually at the left centre back position with Suma staying on the right. Um, you know, Kante then came on for William, which obviously made us switch to a 3-5-2 formation with um, Hazard and Costa up front and Fabregas, Chalaba and Kante as the three proper centre mids. A bit later on, then Loftus-Cheek came on for Eden Hazard just to play next to Costa as a second striker. And then Costa rounded the, rounded the game off to just to seal it because, you know, you don't want to go into, the, into injury time in an FA Cup tie. Just 1-0 up. It's always dangerous. Anything can happen. And Costa made it 2-0. The ball literally just fell to him. Like, Fabregas played a pass. He got intercepted and it just bounced over to Costa. He just got it in, in the box and just put it into a bottom corner. Um, composed finish. And um, input, you could see how much it meant to him. Like, he was not happy. He hasn't scored for four games now, uh, like before that. And, you know, you could see that he really wasn't happy with himself and with how it's going and stuff. So, I think that was good for him. Um, but yeah, obviously the main the main thing is that we won. Man City actually were held to a draw, a nil nil draw away at Huddersfield, which is obviously good because that means they have an additional game with the replay, which is always good with with us fighting against them um, in the league. So yeah, I'm I'm very happy. Um, like I said, I expected a bigger scoreline, I expected a bigger result, especially with the attacking players we put out. But you know, we kept a clean sheet, we won the game, and that's really all that matters. So I'm very much looking forward to the draw. Is it tomorrow? Is it Monday? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Um, if you have any thoughts, leave me all of them down in the comment section below on the game. Um, you know, who was your man of the match? I'm not sure who, who I'd give it to, if I'm completely honest. Um, because first half was really poor. Only decent player was Fabregas, I'm thinking. Second half, he wasn't that good. Misplaced a fair few passes. So I'm not sure. i just give it to Pedro because his goal was just the most important, even though he didn't play so well overall. But, um, you know, without his goal, we probably would have struggled a lot. Um, so, yeah, that's my man of the match. Leave me your man of the match down in the comment section below. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. We massively do appreciate that. Obviously, just remember, thank you guys for 25,000 subscribers. You know, the last couple of months have been crazy. Just after Christmas, we had 20k already on 25. So, we massively do appreciate that support. Um, but, yeah, if you're here watching and haven't subscribed yet, again, click it to subscribe. We do appreciate that. But yeah, thank you guys for, for watching um, Upwards and Onwards, up to Chels, and I'll see you next time.